go. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Well, welcome if this is your first time here and welcome to my returning subscribers. I appreciate your continued support. Today's challenge is a little bit different. We are crafting for the brave. This challenge is hosted by the lovely, kind, and talented Teresa B. from Teresa B. DIY. The co-host is the lovely and wonderful Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. I have left both of their links and the playlist link in the description box below. This challenge, Teresa B. from Teresa B. DIY has created a fundraiser for the Fisher House. The Fisher House is there to support the troops and the troops families if they have to be hospitalized or rehabilitation. It gives a safe place for the families to go free of charge, a nice comfortable place and they can have food and everything there. It's just a wonderful foundation. For the whole month of May, Teresa B. has given all of her ad revenue. Well, she will be donating that to the Fisher House. I have left the link to the Fisher House and to her fundraiser in the description box below. If you are interested in contributing, just click on that link and it'll tell you what to do from there. With that being said, we're gonna get right into this video. DIY number one. Okay, I have a picture frame here and I got it from my stash. I was gonna use it for a different project, but I'm going in here with Rust-Oleum in the color of linen white. It took one coat of paint to completely cover it for this project. And then I have these three little wood rounds that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. I'm going in and I'm covering it with blue chalk paint, Rust-Oleum, navy blue color. And I'll get a paint around the sides as well. The next one, I had paint on my hands, had to wipe it off. I'm a messy painter. I'm going in with Rust-Oleum Rust and Clean Linen and just giving this a good coat of paint all around the edges. And then I'm going to be going in with Arteza acrylic paint in the color of Crimson. And I'll be covering the just the front and sides of this as well. And I'll be setting those, letting them dry. Okay, and we're going to come back. I have some stencils. And I thought that kind of looked like a V, but everybody said, no, that's a U. So we're going with it. And I'm just laying it down, and I'm going in with the Rust-Oleum White. And I'm just pouncing up and down on there. I don't, I, I kind of want it to have like, you know, a distressed look. And it ended up coming out really good. I was pleased with it. And then we're going to go on with the S. This little S is kind of set and crooked, so I was like trying to work with it to get it centered inside of the circle. And then I'm going to use the red by Arteza, the crimson red, and just using a little bit of a, I'm using a sponge, and I'm just pouncing up and down on this one too. You guys will see here, and as well, I ended up painting two of the letters the same color, and I had to go back in and fix it. And you'll see I'm like, uh, okay, what do I do? Which color do I use now? <laughs> I am always doing something like this. And 
I got it centered. And I thought, well, okay, we're going to go ahead and do the white on this. <laughs> and then I realized, okay, oopsie, I have to redo this one. And then I redo it, and it kind of bleeds a little bit. I kind of didn't get the stencil on it exactly correct. And so I had to go back in with a real tiny paintbrush and do some touch-up work on this one. As I couldn't figure out, I was like, wait, that's not looking right here. So we had to back up and redo this one. But in the end, it turns out just fine. Okay, now what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be going in and I'm going to be gluing these down inside of this little frame that I have. And then I put it on there and I had to take it off and because I never measure anything out. I just eyeball it and then I end up having to refix it. So I tried to scoot that one over and it was really glued down. But here's the final and finished project. I went in and made some stitching around it with the Sharpie and I think it turned out just fine. And we're going to move right on to DIY number two. I have a little wooden crate that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going in with some Waverly. Nope. It's not Waverly. It's Rust-Oleum. And linen white. And I'm just giving this a good coat of paint. I'm not painting the inside. Because you will not see it. But I do go around the top on the edges here. And then I'm going to be going in. And I got this little truck. This was on a stick. It was for a yard ornament. And I just took it apart. And I'm going to be, right now, I'm just kind of like trying to measure it out to see, you know, where I should put it exactly. And I go in and I add a generous amount of hot glue. And then you'll see me here. I hold it down. I press it and just keep on holding it and it just did not want to stick and I was going to use some E6000 I couldn't find my E6000 anywhere I was like uh oh and so here I have to go in with some more hot glue and it, set, it eventually set the glue worked I was so happy. Okay, I have some floral foam and some boxwood greenery. I'm just going in and I am completely filling this box up. Now, I did not glue the floral foam down because I will reuse it. I always re reuse things for different crafts. And I save money that way. Like I said, I just completely fill it up. And it turns it, there's the finished project. I think it is adorable. I went in and I just dressed the truck a little bit with some Waverly Antique Wax to make it look like an old truck. And I think it turned out just adorable. And we're going on to DIY number three. We have one of those little flowers. Um, I think it's for, you know, outside decoration from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going in with the color of Crimson Red by Arteza. 
and I'm doing the bottom petals only with the red and this paint covered really really well I didn't have this one only took one coat And I just love these flowers. I mean, you know, you can do so much with them. What I was going to do, I have I had two flowers. And I went to go get a third one because I was going to do a red one, a white one, and a blue one. And the store didn't have any more. So this is what I decided to do. And in the end, I think it turned out just fine. It's got the patriotic look. Now, on the next set of petals, on top of the red ones, I'm going to be going in with Rust-Oleum and the Linen White and just covering the middle section. And then off camera, I go in with the Navy Blue Rust-Oleum and I do the top part and I add a little white star in the middle. And if you've made it this far with me, I appreciate you. Appreciate you watching. And I hope that I've created something that inspired you. Something that you enjoyed. Okay, now here's just a wooden cutting board from the Dollar Tree. Going in with Rust-Oleum again and the linen white. And I'm not giving it a full coverage because I want, you know, some of the wood to come through. And then I'm going to show you there's the flower. I was just giving you a sneak peek at it. <laughs> and then I just glue it down. Well, actually, I go around the edges of the board. All four pieces or sides I should mm -hmm. say and then I'm just going to be going in and uh, doing a light brushing on three of the Jenga blocks because I'm going to be using them as a stand for the back and I wanted it to be completed look at my fingers this, aren't they a mess ooh it's kind of hard to get that paint off your fingernails. <laughs> oh, but I love painting. It's relaxing. Okay, here's the finished project of my patriotic flower. And I think it turned out just adorable. I'll say it turned out stinking cute. ask if you like my content you hit the like subscribe share as well as the post notification bell i ask you to please go down and check out everyone in the playlist thank you for stopping by and you have a blessed and wonderful day